we started counting the number of people that were telling us no. All right, it got to a point where we received 97 straight no's. No. If people can't see what we see, that must mean that there's an opportunity in the market that's real. Mm -hmm. First time I ever heard about Airbnb, I was like, so you're telling me I can rent somebody's house, stay like on their pillows, see their toothbrush. I don't want to do that. Things that are disruptive, people should hear it at first, a lot of times, and be like, I don't know. That's a lot of times when you know that you're headed in the right direction. Yo, what's good? What's poppin'? What it is, what it ain't, what it could be, what it should be, what it would be. It's Cam Newton, the son, Mr. Boogie the All. And today, I am with a creator. I am with a founder. I am with a pioneer. I am with a father. I am with a business owner. I am with a trailblazer. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, little children, dogs and cats, I represent to some and introduce to others. Mr. Ryan Wilson, co-owner of The Gathering Spot. What's up? That's the best intro I've ever had, ever. <laughs> That's all right. Shit, I, you know, I do what I do. You know what I'm saying? I had, you know what's crazy? Well, it ain't crazy, but, you know, I, I had to make sure that I protect my energy. And when, when he says action, because, yep. yep. so, I'm sorry if I was a little... No, nah, you know what I mean? Nah. I'll, Cause I know, man, I got a long day today, but shit, I was up at five, worked out, cardio, and now I'm here. And I ain't complaining, I was just saying that shit just to empower the motherfucker that's listening and, and watching it. <laughs> Tell them to get off the couch. Come on, man, what are we doing? <laughs> they think I'm over here eating fucking potato chips, sitting back in. You know, living this lifestyle of I don't know, but shit, the plan is to to keep it and 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 residual it. You feel me? Yeah. Hand, hand it down. Give me them hand me down money. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. So check, man. Listen, I don't think a lot of people know, but we're gonna tell them. Um, a good friend of mine, Deshaun, came to me three years ago. Yeah, every bit. Yeah, Crazy. three years ago. He said, bro, I want you to come check out this spot in Atlanta. These two brothers, they uh, started a, a, a workspace. Fucking workspace. <laughs> so I'm like, like WeWorks or some shit like that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to come check this shit out. But, bro, it's black. Like, like black. Not black like ratchet black. Black like classic black. Yeah. I said, oh shit, say less. Do the walkthrough, boop. And I was like, okay, I want to be a part of this. Man, I appreciate you. Seen a, seen a couple pictures on the wall, got the uh, artist information, put that art up, but tell, tell the people the story. So I'm gonna tell them that story because that was one of the more significant moments ever for us. Mm -hmm. But to go back to the beginning, man, like I, I called my roommate one day from college and was like, Yo, I got an idea to create a place for us. Mm. And I'm so fortunate that TK is his name. Right. Responded back and was like, hey, I'll go on this journey with you. Let's figure it out. And so we started meeting in my apartment every night. We did that for years. Finally got to a spot where the club was ready to open. And so the part of the story that you just picked up on, we were trying to figure out how to grow, right? Mm -hmm. And needed to, yeah, understand the like fundamentals of the first business, but we mm -hmm. wanted to expand. And we're trying to find good partners, right? right? It was absolutely about capital. Like, we needed money to do it. But we needed good people to yeah. be around the business, too. Right. And, uh, no, nah, you you stepped in in a super critical time. Right. I always have love and appreciation yeah. for... I mean, yo, for the first, like, two years, mm -hmm. we made no money. Mm. And so get into a place where we could finally see, like, wow, yeah. we could build another one and then mm -hmm. another one. That was that was a special turning point for us as a as a team and as a company. So for the people who don't know, I am a very silent partner in the gathering spot. And when I say silent partner, I mean I don't want the narrative to be said, 
Oh, Cam Newton own gathering spot? Because that initially will defame or not, in my eyes, may no, not be yours. No, no, yeah, no. I feel like you and, and TK, what you guys have built, it's something that needed to be done. And you guys are solid young brothers, young cats, that's doing something that I don't want to take that from y'all. You feel me? Yeah. And y'all doing it the right way. And, and, you know, when you gave me the proposal, when you gave me, you know, everything that you guys are about, I'm like, man, what the fuck? Shit, I ain't, where the fuck have I been? You know what I'm saying? Like, y'all been building this all around Atlanta and I ain't even been here. You know what I'm saying? So it was something that I wanted to be a part of. And obviously, I'm all about buying black. You guys got something that's going on right now as yeah. far as buying black and challenging people to do so. Uh, but at the same time, for me, it's always been about empowering, um, you know, our people, right? Yeah. And learning from all people to empower your people. And your people may be people who look like you, people who don't look like you. It could be your everyday sequence of life. You may be a school teacher. So you can't just say your people as just a race because it's bigger than that. You can't just say your people as your religion because it's bigger than that. Yeah. Your people is the people you come in contact with on a, on a regular basis. Yeah. Yo, true story. So I lived in D.C. for a minute, mm -hmm. and we thought we were going to put the first gathering spot in D.C. before we decided to come to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And the research that I did is I would go around and get in taxis. I couldn't really like get the, the special advisors and all the consultants. But what I could do was get in taxis and the, the folks that had the most game on what was happening in the city were the folks that were driving around, right? So they would tell me, oh, yo, have you heard about that development over there? Like, yo, people hang out over here. Mm -hmm. I come over here all the time. And so I started honestly taking notes, right? And like was able to build a plan about how to better understand the city from being in a bunch of taxis over years, right? It's like, to your point, figuring out how to network across Right. A lot of times people are trying to talk to the to the big job, mm -hmm. and that's not often where you want to be. You want to be with the people that you can grow you up be, with. You want to be in the trenches. Yo, it's, it's, someone told me once there's a difference between vertical networking and horizontal networking. Mm. And if you look at successful people, a lot of times they networked horizontally. They grew up with folks, mm -hmm. right? And they call on relationships from 10 years ago, mm -hmm. not these like fantasy stories or like one day they met the big shot on yeah, top. And he believed most, in me, yeah. Most of the time that doesn't happen. Yeah. But like that person that's been grinding it out for five years with yeah. you, 10 years, and you can you can remember moments where you weren't even talking about business. Right. Those are the people that end up making the difference in your life. Ryan, what's your biggest gift? I connect people. That that's that's I'm not good at a lot of things, but mm -hmm. I'm decent at that. Like I can I I figure out how to connect dots between people, honestly, that shouldn't meet one another. Like, I don't believe in all these rules mm -hmm. around how we're supposed to connect with each other. So, yeah. like, you'll hear stuff like, oh, you know, that's for that's for the corporate types. Like, if you're creative, like, you don't go over there. Or like, oh, that's for the, the entrepreneurs. Like, if you're not, you're not in business, like, you shouldn't go over there. I'm like, no, like, it's better when the entrepreneurs know the people that work for the businesses. Mm -hmm. And it's better when they know the creatives in the city. Like, who wrote these rules that old people can't hang out with young people? Mm -hmm. Like... I, I don't believe in any of that. So I'm always trying to connect dots between people that, again, are being told other where, like in other places that they shouldn't talk to each other. Yeah. Um, just as, you, as, you, as you're on this type of, um, you know, mentality of business and empowering, talk to a person who, how, how, how did the gathering spot come to be? Right? Did you come for money? Did TK come for money? Was it a loan? Was it a, you know, who were who are the people behind the scenes to make the scene great? So our family was huge, uh, specifically my family. Mm -hmm. like, so my parents are entrepreneurs. Okay. So I was able to call on them heavy in the early days. But we still had to raise money. Yeah. And we started counting the number of people that were telling us no. All right, it got to a point where we received ninety-seven straight no's. No, and a, like, like just like I've been in every hotel in Atlanta with people barely showing up, showing up, not caring, telling us get out of here, it's is gonna that, fail. Is I mean, that is, is that considered a no? 
is, oh. a, is not being able to follow up a no. What's considered your no? I, I mean, eventually people would be like, oh, like, nah, like I'm, I'm not, I'm not doing right. this. Right. But it was cool because I got to this space where it was like, if people can't see what we see, that must mean that there's an opportunity in the market that's real. Mm -hmm. Because if they could see it and it was easy, then like that probably means that like this has been done before. Right. And this might be a hard, this might be a hard thing to climb. But like we just got comfortable in it. I mean, I was young, I didn't have anything to lose. And I really just felt like the people that were telling us no were crazy. Yeah. And like it would go home and like talk about them that way. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, like, he's tripping. Yeah. Like, this is about to be amazing. Correct. I'm glad he doesn't get it. And I'm gonna call him back in five years and be mm -hmm. like. Now, the, the, a supreme optimist. I, it's okay if people don't believe in what you believe. Mm -hmm. That's fine. In fact, as an entrepreneur, you need those people, right? Like, I'll give you an, I'll give you an example we all know. Mm -hmm. First time I ever heard about Airbnb, I was like, so you're telling me that I can rent somebody's house, stay like on their pillows, see their toothbrush. I don't want to do that. I'm not, I'm hotel me, please. Like, I'm not, right, right, right. I don't want to stay in nobody's house. Like, mm -hmm. that sounds disgusting. Now, it's a brand. That's, that's a business it, plan. It, it's, it's, it's a it's, massive company, right? So, like, oh it, it takes people being able, same Uber. I was like, hold on. So, like, somebody's going to come pick me up in their car mm. and take me where? Anyway. I'm cool. I'm just going to get back in the taxis I was talking about. Like, yeah. I don't, I don't want to get in your car. I don't understand that. Mm -hmm. Now, so like things that are disruptive, people should hear it at first a lot of times and be like, I don't know. That's a lot of times when you know that you're headed in the right direction. So I stayed, I just tried to stay in that space. And you, like energy, right. that was, we just tried to keep positive. People didn't believe it was cool. I was looking for people that would uplift us mm -hmm. and we just kept swimming. Right. So with that team of, you know, when you say family, um, I was about to say, you was telling on yourself when you say, man, I just jumped in the taxi and then I kept getting taxis information. Tell the people how old are you? 32 now. Most of the story that I was just telling, I was 22, mm. 23. And like, it, I looked at those taxis as investments. Like it wasn't like, it wasn't like that for me. I was a student, right? Mm -hmm. So I was trying to genuinely use it as, as a practice. Like I would really go and try to like mm -hmm. lay it out Yo, I like I know these folks know information about where people hang out. Right, right. I think I can learn something from them. Yeah, it's not the fancy book, it's not the cool website, but like I really think that these folks know, right? So I'm gonna sit and just be a student of the game. I'm gonna learn about the city through the eyes of people right. who learn about the city all day. So right. um I mean it was it was I never let age be a limiting factor. Mm-hmm. For me, it was like a lot of dope young people have created things, and why not me? Like, yeah. why, like, why can't I? I only get I only get a chance to do this life thing one time, as I understand it. Right, right. So, like, I can't waste. Got to max out. Why? Why am I gonna wait? Like, like, what is the perfect time gonna be? Right, like, mm -hmm. and who are these people telling me that it's? Oh no, you got to be thirty two to, to start. Like, says who, who made these rules? I don't know who made them. I know I'm not following them because yeah. it's not. It, it doesn't. It doesn't apply to you. It's not. It's not attainable or tangible to your life. I was speaking, you know, with a guest prior to, and I was just saying, like, you know, Cinderella's shoe is built for Cinderella. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Like Ryan's shoe is not built for Ryan. It's Cam's shoe is not built for Cam. Joe's shoe is not built for, you know, Cam. like, bro, all these different things. Um, but yeah, as we as we just keep going, what is the price of success as you know it? You know what I'm real, saying? Real, real honest discipline. Mm. Like real, like like the real stuff. Not the not the easy, like make you feel good, make like really consistently getting into a zone where you can do the same thing at max speed. Over and over mm -hmm. and over again, because like a lot of times when folks they see things that they'll call overnight, mm -hmm. it's like oh it happened at night, not overnight. Oh. Like it, like 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 a long a lot of nights that y'all didn't see, right? But like over TK and I used to meet every day, mm -hmm. 
like every day. Now we didn't. When people were like, "Hey, we going out." If we had a session booked, it was that like we just we got into a habit of like every day we'll take a step, and I believe that those steps, as cliche as it sounds, will add up. Mm -hmm. I'm not smarter than anybody, but like I don't think that most people are going to be able to get into this space of just being consistent. So every successful person that I've ever studied, mm -hmm. they have the ability to get in that zone where they can just like year, day after day, year after year, just put the time in. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm not perfect at it. Mm -hmm. there, I mean, we all have days where it's like, I don't feel like doing this. Right. But even in those days, I'm like, okay, hold on. But that's the day. I, I I got I gotta get I gotta figure that's out how to the day. right. I gotta right. get back in the zone at some point because I'm competitive, right? Too so like I really believe that the people I'm competing against that like I, I can't afford that that time. Like I can't give them the the, the hour I'm about to take. Yeah, like so, they about to not take it and like. So check this out. So this morning, woke up at five, right. Um, had to drive because, you know, me and my little um, accountability partners, our days are Tuesdays and Thursdays. We go play basketball in the morning. Mm. But before basketball, the session starts at 7 a.m., mm. right? Um, the gym opens or the, the facility opens at 6, right? I want to be walking through there at 6, because yep. usually I got the luxury to be able to just go down to my gym. I got, a, you know, a, 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 a good situation. space. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, shit, why the fuck would I leave here to go somewhere else and just be bombarded, whatever. So this morning, to your point, right, I'm looking around and I asked this person, like a lot of people don't understand and maybe your drive may be too venomous to the average. Yeah. And I saw that this morning. A young, a young man, you know, me and my accountability partners, as I state, like homeboys that, you know, we battle. Yeah. I don't got no fucking friends. When, yeah. when I'm in that mode, yeah. right. ma, hey, stop playing. Hey, chosen, sovereign. Hey, y'all go sit over here real quick. Daddy about to play. When I'm getting that mode, don't play with me. Yep. It even got to a point where I had to stop having my kids come down to the to pregame because it was switching my mode. Yeah. Like, I would be like, oh, man, I'm doing it for them. But then, all right, nah, mm -hmm. not, like, no, I don't, I don't like that feeling. I, mm -hmm. Like, when that feel, that's after the game feeling yep. for me. So back to fast forward that. So I'm here at six, working out, did cardio. I already did a full workout. I go to the basketball court around about 7.30, 7.45. Been in the actual facility since six. So the first game, you know. I usually get picked every time because, oh, shit, that's Cam Newton. Like, you know what I mean? Like, shit, I want to play with him. So they pick me. We lose. Yeah, nah. Fuck! Yeah. My accountability partner. Hey, bro, you going to take your lap? I say, yep. You know what? Boom. I run my lap. And I say, yo, a big man. Had a big guy on our team. You know, not fat, blabby. Big just a big guy. I say, yo, big man, you going to run with me? It's 7.52. You literally woke up. I literally seen it. And this is how people, bro, I had a whole epiphany while I was running around this morning. People will literally wake up in the morning just to say they did something. Yeah. yeah. My man literally had no points. Yeah. Had no rebounds. Yeah. No. Didn't even hustle. Was just on a team. <laughs> lost. And went back and sat down. Dry. Just like you are right now. I said, yo, man. Yo, D. Hey, come on, man. Roll with me, bro. Let's get it in. Something like something. Like, we lost, too. I mean, on top of that, like, that's... I mean, we don't do something for nothing. Like, we battling. Like, shit, in the league, shit, you get paid for it. Shit, this recreation so shoot. This is the joy of knowing that you made somebody run. Make yep. somebody do some push-ups or something. You know what it did? Left. Just, I look at that. just kept sitting there. He said, "Didn't even hustle. I didn't do shit." <laughs> and I said, "This is a perfect indication 
of people that are comfortable. Yeah. Because they don't apply discipline. They don't even have a routine. I said, bro, I'd be, I be damned if I wake up this early and not sweat, at least sweat. Yeah. Now, I could be sorry as fuck. I could just airball, airball, brick, squat, airball, airball, brick. But I'm a sweat. My main thing here that I'm doing is cardio. I just want to run up and down. Yeah. I want to compete. I want to have fun. I want to challenge people. And I just sit up here and look at that dude. I'm like, bro, yo, yeah. hey, yo, my man. You ain't, you gonna run with me? No, bro, you trying me right now. You know I'm big. That's, that's the energy that he came off. He didn't have to say it. So when you say routine, discipline, I don't play basketball. Last time I played basketball, or organized basketball was in high school, right? I went to a basketball school, right, Westlake. It's a lot of killers that came out of Westlake. Uh, without it being a private school or a school that can, re that, that can recruit, Westlake holds their own. Darren yeah. Rogers, uh, Coach Hankerson, um, uh, just top tier program. Um, and for me, I just was looking at, I was just so bamboozled, like, bro, you're just so comfortable with being comfortable. It's acting like, like you have more time. Right? And, I, and I don't, I don't know how much time I have, right? And so, the scariest thing for me is to get to the end of that shot clock, like, like the game will expire. <laughs> Everything like, has an expiration. It, 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 that it will expire, and I don't want to be at that moment and be like, man, those days where I could, I could have been running, mm. I could have been playing, mm. I didn't do that because I was sitting down, chilling. Mm. That just. That I, if there's one thing I'm scared of in life is that I don't want to ever have that feeling. I want to be like very comfortable being like, I did everything that I could do. I, I, I love the folks that, that were in, in my orbit. Mm -hmm. And ultimately people felt like, like I, was, I was helpful while I was here. Right. I don't want people being like, wow, he wasted some time. And I don't want to feel that way about myself. It's like the, the single biggest fear of my life. You know, the thing about me is, God willing, when I, when I go to the upper room, hopefully, God willing, that if I have an open casket, not a tragic accident or, you know, something like whatever, I want somebody to look in that casket and be like, God, <laughs> damn. Boy, he lived, yeah, boy. Yeah, yeah, he he did, got yeah. everything from yeah, life right yeah, there. You he hear me? He did it, yeah. Not no. Right, I, I, I want to see wrinkles. I want to see just, I want to laugh so much, bro. It's just a permanent uh, a smile. Like I want, I want to get every single thing out of life. Everything that life has to offer. I, I need it. Man, I had, that, I had that epiphany when I was in college. Mm. I'm sitting around in school, and so I went to Georgetown for undergrad. Mm -hmm. They did this whole thing when we started where they brought everybody in the room, and they were like, hey, you know, everybody in here is a valedictorian, a salutatorian. And I was sitting in the room like, that ain't me. <laughs> not me. Like I'm, like, I'm happy to be here. Yeah. So I was walking in these classes, like, being a little intimidated by the, I'm like, oh, like, everybody in here is supposed to be, like, the smartest people mm -hmm. ever. But then we got into class, man, and I would start to like really examine these cats. Mm. I was like, hold on. It ain't all that happening here, mm -hmm. right? Like half of the, the distance that exists is like these cats really believe that like they're going to be great. Like it's just that there was like this, this like the audacity to, I mean, we even talking about business, they'd be like, I'm fundamentally about to just disrupt the whole world. Mm. And I'd be like, I'm just trying to pass this class. Yeah. But once I started to look at be like, well, hold on, like, I, I'm gonna disrupt the world too. Yeah, I like that. The game started to to change a little bit, mm -hmm. and then I got to a point where it's like, oh, like I can't let these cats live a better life than me. And, that, and that's not a material thing. It's just yeah. like I can't look be at the end of this and be like, wow, I didn't get to experience what life has to offer, mm -hmm. and I watched other people right. who really again just had more confidence than me go grab all the stuff that I, I wanted them to try, like. Right. That doesn't, that, that can't be how this goes. So if I flop, I'll take the, I will take the flop genuinely mm -hmm. 
as long as I know that I I played, like I I was there, I showed up at seven a.m. and 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 participated. Like I'll take the participation points right. over sitting at home. Mm -hmm. And college college did that for me though. Like just really getting up close and personal with cats that were like again had been told their whole lives that they were brilliant. Right. And really having to like wrestle with the fact that like hold on, they're not. It's it's it, it's. It, it, it's more of a placebo. Confidence and true belief in yourself mm. goes a long way in most things. I guess the it's the original seed, certainly in entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. Like you have to genuinely believe you're the best person in the world to solve this problem. Ooh. If you don't, go home. Like you shouldn't, because the game is designed to tell you that like there are other people that are better than you. Mm -hmm. So if you don't believe that. Move on to the next thing until you feel that way. Yeah. I asked this question before. I had um, the CEO of uh, Overtime mm. uh, I spoke with, Dan Porter. Um, and I don't know how I ward, uh, worded it, but is it what's more important, the preparation or the feeling? You know what I'm saying? Like, if if you had a business model, yeah, right, and you, and I say, you know what? Talk to me, Ryan. Like, what do you got? Okay, right here, dog. We did all the numbers. Like, we will want to put gathering spot right here because it's the economic. Yeah, it's about yeah. to be an economic boom over the next couple of years. Da 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 da. Or, not have that and just speak your vision. Which one's most important? I, I'm a preparation guy. Mm. Like, I think you have to. There's certain things that you have to be ready for the moment. And like if you haven't done the work beforehand, probably gonna get ate up in the in, in certain conversations, business conversations all day. Because mm -hmm. folks are gonna start asking you things that they're going to expect are fundamental. Mm -hmm. And if you can't give just the basic answers to how you've been thinking about it, mm -hmm. a lot of times indicating that you've been thinking about it over time. I, I don't know. Like it's it's hard to to freestyle that. Mm -hmm. Like I, I'm I love organic stuff in the right moments, but like to get to that place a lot of times where you can free flow, right? That means you've been in the lab a lot of times, getting to a place where you can like you, you'll hear people who who like do all, artists of all kinds. Like yo, like I could do a performance on the spot because I've been I've been practicing for performances for 15 years. Right. So. I'm, I'm a believer in, in the prep. Like you can't preparation. Yeah, if you if you if you prepare for most stuff, you can get through, and a lot of times it's so. That's what's been helpful to me. I'm not, I'm not smarter than uh, genuinely. Like I'm gonna outwork you, mm -hmm. and part about working you is that, like I'm going to out prepare for whatever the thing is. Like I'm, I, I walk into the room, I will have read the stuff, I will have researched you, I will have like. Whatever it is that I could do to try to get an edge, right. I walk into the room that way. Like I'm not gonna walk in and start trying to figure it out once I get here. Mm. Something that just came up that I just peeped. I've never seen you not wear black. <laughs> yes, I. It, I was telling the team earlier. It, it eliminates you on that Steve Jobs shit. I don't even like. I don't even that reference. I think is overused for me. It is easier in this season of my life to so just... So you just wear this... How many black pants do you own? Uh, a lot. A lot. How many lot. of those gathering spots and broader shirts do you own? So have? the good thing about owning the company is that, like, I don't even know. Like, we produce this stuff, and I'll be, like, taking whole mm. racks of this stuff. I mean, like, I, I have them... I got them everywhere. I got them in my car. I got them in, my, like, my house. I got them in the... <laughs> I got him with the other guy. Mean that I, mean, I just got like the shirt under here. The guy that's my shirt. Like I just like I just have I have TGS stuff. You branded. I mean, like nobody else gonna wear Is it. Them glasses. Uh, no, they not yet. That's, that's a good. <laughs> that's a good idea. <laughs> nah, like look, if I'm not gonna wear it, mm -hmm. who will? I can't expect. I mean, I can't expect anybody else to. Like real so, shit. Uh, I mean, part of it is that like if I don't if I don't have our stuff on, uh, what expectation do I have to have other people? I mean, how you gonna see it? Like, like, like you, there has to be a, a moment where you're like, "I mean, he rocks it." So, like, yeah. it, it, at least that's one person. You got you as the creator has to be the biggest 
ad, ad like billboard for it. I believe it. It goes back to like if you don't believe you're the best person in the world to solve the problem. Mm. If you don't believe you, you should rock your own stuff. Why are you doing this? Mm -hmm. but, and like whatever it is, like it doesn't matter. Whatever the business is, if you're not a consumer of your own thing, right. nobody else is. Like like I think a lot of entrepreneurs get that mixed up in the beginning. It's like oh no, no the community is going to support me. Mm -hmm. Not 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 if you don't make them. Like you have to you got to put something out in the world that makes people respond. Right. Like it's not going to just you, should, you can't be entitled to it. It's not, it's not coming just because you feel like it should. So I want to really get into this list of really speaking on the gathering spot. But you have an art to you know, me being a quarterback, making people believe. You're a quarterback in your own right. <laughs> that's, that's an art of government from you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> to believe for a person to believe in your vision to invest, to raise capital. Um, what's your strategic strategy when you're going into certain things? Is it is it dictated by um, just status? Do you have the same pitch? Have you said certain things so many different times that you just, like talk to me. It's changed a lot um, and I, I had to get a lot better, right? When we started, I didn't understand the fundamentals of investing, to be honest, right? So I would go into the conversation and I'd be talking about all the stuff that I thought was cool and like all the things that we were going to accomplish. When it comes to investing, fundamentally what an investor is looking for is a return on their investment. ROI. All that cool stuff is great, but you've got to figure out how to get them quickly to an understanding about, I'm going to give you X. <laughs> And you go get me why, right? And like you have to demonstrate that like you're the person that is going to be there to drive that return. Mm -hmm. I got lost in the sauce early, and I would be talking about all types of other stuff. And then folks would get to the end of the conversation, like, "Oh, that's all great, but like, where's mm. where's my like where's my money? Like, right. how much <laughs> do you need? Yeah, like, and how, how much do you need? And what is it coming back? Going, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I want my money back. But then you start like when you get better at understanding that, you can figure out how to tailor the conversation. To what folks are interested in, right? And like, you got to also know that not everybody is interested in investing in everything. Mm. So you can't talk to a, a tech person about real estate most of the time. Like, that's not their, right. that's not how they, Start that's not what they like to invest in. Right. So I got better at that too, being like, okay, hold on. I'm talking to a person that, from my research, they really like real estate plays. Mm. So I should, I should talk about our model through the lens of real estate more than I should talk about it through the lens of tech. Right. And again, like, I, I mean, I, I, I took a lot of L's, right. but I learned and got better at each, each time and like just kept trying to figure out how to, um, how to get there. But you got to let people know that like if they give you some money, first, you put everything that you have into it and that you're going to treat their dollar like it's yours. Mm -hmm. Like I, I could look anybody in the eye and tell them like, look, I will go as far as humanly possible to make sure that you get a return. Mm. Full stop. Like this is not a you gonna hand me a check and then I'm gonna run off and you're gonna see me on Instagram. Flex. Mm -hmm. I'm about to go, like I'm gonna put this the capital to work and then I'm about to go to work to drive a return. Right. And you know, fortunately, you 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 get you, again, you just like you gotta you gotta be willing to go on a journey with this though. Yeah. Like the first 50 times I pitched, mm -hmm. terrible. I can look back you on them now. It, it yeah, I can, I can look back now and tell you, like, they were straight up terrible. That was like, they were, yeah. I didn't know, I didn't know what I was talking about, and I didn't know, I didn't know even, like, the numbers well enough. Do you remember the first person you pitched to? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. It was a guy here in Atlanta, a uh, family friend, mm -hmm. took the meeting as a favor. And he was like, yo, you have work to do. Ah. Yeah, like, I mean, he, just, he was very honest with me. He was like, yeah. ah. he was like how, so, long, how long did the pitch to take? Uh, I mean, maybe gave me 15 minutes. It wasn't a long. He saw it pretty quickly because like, I couldn't get to the point. Right. I was in there, oh, we're going to like, it's going to have a little bit of. And he was just like, hold on, like, give right. it to me. Like, hold on, let's reel this baby back <laughs> in. This bait a little wiggly. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know what you're talking about, really. Yeah. And like you seem passionate about it, but like 
what is the it? I don't get it. And then he was the first person to put me on to like, oh, that's great, but like, where's my money? Like, I just, mm-hmm. if I give you some money, when do I get my money back? And I was like, ooh, mm-hmm. good point. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, we're going we gonna to get it back to you. And he was like, nah, that, uh, that's not. It's, not, it, it's <laughs> fraud. And he was like, that doesn't, like, <laughs> you need to be very specific about how you, I want my, I want my money back. Like, yeah. like this is going to be a different type of relationship right. if I don't get my money back. I'm I swear <laughs> to be. So, yeah. I still didn't fully understand after that conversation, but like I started to get, okay, like, hold on. Investing is not about friendly. It ain't about who's, who's going to have the best friends. It's going to yeah. be who has the best model to drive mm-hmm. a return. And we ended up raising a decent amount of money and Could we're able to grow. I've never shared before. I've never talked about it. Come on down to fucking uh, Friday uh, uh, and keep it a buck. I ain't never talked about it. Uh, we, the, talk about. The, the first initial the, the to to create the gathering spot in Atlanta. The first one, the first round was three million. Mm. So we've raised over twenty million. Mm-hmm. And the reason why I've never talked about it out loud is not because I'm ashamed of it. Right. Honestly, like most businesses don't raise any money. Right. But I didn't talk about it because. For me, there were other stats that were more important. Like, and I, like, we employed 200 people in our community mm-hmm. and have really high quality jobs. Like, the business has been profitable since inception. We've never lost money, ever. Mm-hmm. And like, I wanted to talk about those things because I think a lot of times, you know, people get lost in the headlines and they want to, they want to talk about, you know, all all these kind of vanity numbers. I wanted to talk about to me what were the numbers that showed like that the business was was real. So like we're profitable right. to me was more important than being like ah, I just raised another five million dollars. Like it just it didn't it didn't feel right. Have you and TK ever talked about taking this company public? Yeah, we 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 um look we're not playing small with this thing at all. Mm-hmm. Like this is about trying to get to real scale. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of times, uh, you know, the conversation in business is like, oh, we should just be happy to just have a business just to exist Mm -hmm. with respect. Like, that's not where I am with this anymore. Like, I'm... Do you plan on selling it? No, I'll... I'll, Like, not not in that way, right? Like... In what uh, way, though? Let's take it public. Right. Let's let's take it to the... Let's take it to the the moon. Because I'll, I'll say this, right? So, a lot of people... And I and I got a quote. I'm in logistics right now, mm. right? Mm. As a broker, mm. right? Uh, have visions to become a freight forwarder one day with me and my partner. Stop. I got a quote that I said to him on the board. I say you have to feed people only what they're capable of digesting. Yeah. Right. So when I tell you that, I ask you that because a lot of people. My the people that I come in contact contact with yeah. aren't used to the model of business. The companies that I've invested in, there's quite a few, mm-hmm. right? I've got a return on my investment in Gathering Spot. I got a return on my investment in other uh, companies. Um, so you looking at this hair, you looking at this outfit, you looking at all this distracting shit, thinking that I'm not a businessman. How foolish could you be? But other comrades or other entities that I've invested in, their plan is to sell. Yeah. We're trying to create enough capital to push, to make a push to sell. Yeah. And then we're gonna start something else. Yeah. But clearly here. So like we are, we are, so we're doing a couple of things right now. So we're working with Greenwood, right? Mm-hmm. We're in the fintech space now. Brought the companies together, but and you, I'm gonna talk about that too. If you look at if you look at black owned businesses, right? Far too many. Of, I saw a stat as like 96 percent of our businesses don't ever gross a million dollars top mm-hmm. line. And so, again, this isn't about shaming people. It's about just understanding the consequences of what happens when our businesses don't scale. Mm-hmm. That means you can't hire people. 
if you can't hire people with that, another very sad stat is that if you're black in America, the likelihood that you're going to work at a black owned business, very small. Mm. Statis- like it's statistically insignificant. But why though? Because our companies aren't big enough. Like we just don't have enough, we don't have enough companies that make enough money to hire enough people. And so your, our options are limited in terms of where you can go, right? It's, 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 a, it's a numbers problem. Man, my father gave me a statistic is about, as far as culturally, African Americans are at the bottom of the food chain when it's the dollar that's spent in their community. Uh, man, our, our dollar doesn't circulate not even one time. Most stats uh. say six hours. So... Uh. I mean, now you look at let's look at other other cultures. You may look at the Mexican, Hispanic uh, descent, a Caucasian, um, Asian Americans, um, Indians, uh, Punjabis. Uh, you start to see dollars in those communities bruh. circulate. Like everybody, it's like, hold on, we're gonna, I'm gonna be in business with you. You're gonna be in business with them. Like no, it just listen, keeps. It's a real thing. I've literally. So I'll share this too, being a, a broker, my vision or our vision, and I'm speaking for you know my partner as well, has always been to try to uh, obtain a carrier by paying for it. Right? Yeah. Almost like cheating the system, but it's, it's legal, right? Yeah, sure, yeah. So it's like, why would we use our MC number, which is not active, but you have an MC number, you haven't really moved the capacity that we're moving so let's partner yes right so i can use your mc number and i can have your assets trailers warehouses trucks right all of it all that and you got or we in essence start working together yep we've had multiple meetings with punjabis and if you ask yourself like what is a punjabi it's like of uh indian descent right um not native american indians but Indians, right? Um, middle, is it Middle East? Yes. Right. Same, similar reach. Uh, with that being said, every single time they come visit us or we go visit them, the first thing that they request is we have to go eat at an Indian restaurant. Yeah. And I'm like, bro, this is wild. They don't even know each other, though. You see what I'm saying? We had a meeting and then that person said the same thing like, okay, what well, y'all want to eat? So, could you please find an Indian restaurant? Yeah. We met with another person. They came to Atlanta. Where do you want to eat? So, could you? Re- we want to yeah. eat at an Indian. And restaurant. it's not even just because of the food. It's like it's about circulating the dollar. Like, oh. it's, a, it's not even food's cool, but like, uh, yo, I was I was in Dubai. I didn't know this until I was there. You can't start a business in Dubai unless a local starts the business with you. What? They like they full like. You that's are, a that's a that's a rule. It is by law. You are not allowed to start a company. Like we couldn't roll into Dubai right now and be like, like let's go, let gather a spot. N- nah, it would be like who local is a part of the ownership structure that is going to bring this business with y'all. If, does it have to be of the descent, or does it have to be? It, as I understand, it had to be somebody like somebody who has who lives citizenship. There. Okay. In order in order to make to to start the business and like. Folks hear that like, oh, that's unfair. But what was happening is saying, no, oh, no, nah, the dollars got to realize there's a niche that the dollars got to stay in the community. Right. Like it's, we're not about to just let the stuff can't just just stuff. you just can't come profit off of our property, off of our lifestyle, off of our you know real estate, and not put us on. Imagine if people on the west side or south side started saying the same thing. You can't build that here unless there's some local folks. That oh, are part of this job. Like, like does that doesn't we that does not happen right now. And because it doesn't happen, you look up in neighborhoods where nobody that lives in the neighborhood owns anything. Mm. Look at the west side of the city. The to me, the fundamental issue is that barely anybody that lives there owns anything. And if you don't own, as you know, the land at a minimum. Mm-hmm. What do you have? Correct. So like you can't like you can go to as many town meetings as you want to. At the end of the day, the landowners are gonna make decisions about what they want to do with that land. Fair or unfair. And if you're not a part of the landowner group, 
You're just a person watching the conversation. So is that is that the literacy? Is that mental literacy of understanding like, okay, I need to become some type of owner. I need to own my property. But what do you say to the person that may not have the capital to do so? What the fuck are they supposed to do? Black folks spend $1.6 trillion a year. So wealth gap exists, but we got to start talking about co cooperative economics, about collaboration, and know that like there are gaps, but together we can fill a lot of the gaps. Like I might not be able to buy a house, mm -hmm. but we could buy a house. Mm -hmm. we, we could buy a house if we wanted to, right? And like that, that does, that, that's a lot of times easier said than done, right? But it is it's possible. People all the time will be like, you know, we're going to get that vacation home down there together. Mm -hmm. You put up a little bit, I put mm -hmm. up a little bit. Same, same thought process around our own neighborhoods. I can't get it solo, but you can. Right. To, or we can. Partner. This season, I think for us collectively, needs to be about partnership. Mm. I, I think if, there's, if, if we go back and look at this time, what success would look like to me is wow, like we partnered. We saw some really dope collaborations mm -hmm. between people that we didn't expect to see them from. And that is what made a difference. Like, so to that point, let's talk about the big acquisition of, of uh, partnering with Greenwood, who was, yeah. a, was a fintech company. Fintech, yeah. And I believe when that acquisition happened, that was when I was able to get a return mm -hmm. on my investment, right? Yeah. But still have some skin in the game. Yeah. And you know what was so devastating about that partnership? What? TK sent me an article about the whole totality of what it looked like, right? I read it. Bloomberg article, yep. right? And to my knowledge, please correct me if I'm wrong, Greenwood tried to only use minority-based banks yeah. to make this deal happen. Yeah. And with my research, yeah. it said, Collectively, around the United States, there's only 20 minority-owned banks. Yeah. Out of those 20, did you remember how much collectively that they had in assets? I think it's like $5 billion in assets. Mm. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's, it's a so just to put that into perspective, right? Let's take everybody that's in this room right now. Camera. You can't see this, but I'm a may oh, I say anywhere from about 15 to 20 people are in this room right now, right? So basically we have a town hall meeting and we say, hey, we need everybody's money to put up as collateral assets to be able to make this acquisition that we all can be a part of. Correct? Yep. And it collected, or all the collections added up to be close to six billion dollars. Let's give it, you know, six billion. Okay, we walk out of the room, walk down the hall, and let's just run into Chase Bank. We're not even talking about Wells Fargo. We're not even talking about Bank of America, Truist, uh, Regions, uh, none of the credit unions or whatever, just banks. Chase, JP Morgan, Chase Bank alone, did you remember that number? How many assets they have? I can't even call that number. It is $3.2 trillion. Dollars. Yeah, it's trillions. So basically saying to you, all the minorities around, uh, minority banks alone can't even, can't even compete with one American bank. Yeah. No, it's, that's why we're doing this. Uh, we have, look, uh, this season is about scale. Uh, so I said it like we'll, we'll look back and it's going to be about partnership. That those partnerships should help our businesses get to scale, and and that is where we have to stay focused because it's not about shaming any one like mm -hmm. every bank is trying to be as big as they can be. But hold and, on, uh, hold on, hold on. <laughs> it's not about shaming. It's about educating, though, too. We got to know. Yeah. In that same yeah. article, it did speak on the insufficiencies or the 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 I'm trying to say the right word because I I don't been going viral here lately. <laughs> the I would say insufficiencies of acceptances of loans and. 
a bank, you can do your own research, has been sued because a certain group of people are able to get loans that other people aren't able to get. And you can't tell me that if somebody comes and try to have a business, a small business loan, yes. credit or no credit. Yeah, we know, you know, Pookie doggone credit messed up way before he get 18 years old because his mama been running his dog on just <laughs> throwing a muck. I mean, just messing it all up, right? But at the end of the day, you should still have opportunity to grow. We have to have institutions in our community that can do the type of deals that you're talking about. Like it's just, it, it's really the long and short of the conversation is that we do not have insti- like we don't have banks, we don't have financial institutions right now that have the capacity at scale to do the type of like of what deals. Though? Like when you say institutions, uh, like give me a tangible I'm, thing. I'm talking that about I just, just like banks that can do loans that that we that we own, right? Like as because for banks make money on the products that they offer. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people think that like banks make money off of the deposits that no, we put in. No, 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 no. They they, they deploy bank, that bank, capital. <laughs> bank back. banks make money off of debt. It's products. They have a bunch of different products mm-hmm. and, and they charge folks interest on those products. Correct. And that's how they make money, right? On 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 the, the difference. Mm-hmm. We don't own enough businesses or banks rather at scale to fully supply the because wait we start companies all the time like we, we actually if you look at the research we start more companies than most communities do mm. we don't have financial services it just happened with, with tgs we were growing i'm looking around and i'm like man we keep begging to get invited to some of these tables mm. this move is about saying I ain't begging nobody to come to a table mm. anymore. When somebody from the community calls and says, hey, I'm looking for a banking product, we're like, okay, cool. Go talk to our banker. You're right. The banker that like that's a part of our company that can talk. And it look, it's not always going to be a yes that comes from that conversation, mm-hmm. but you won't have one mm-hmm. and it won't always be a no. Right. And if you know the history of a banking and you know the wealth gap that exists in this this country. Right. We gotta have institutions that are able to specifically service our needs. Right. And that's what we're doing. All right. It's, it's not so everything about the gathering spot is staying the same. We are just now doing it with the ability to be able to point our community to our own folks and resources to help them achieve whatever it is that they're working on. Right. So we can talk to business owners about deals. In a way that we couldn't before, like we didn't, we didn't have, we weren't a bank, right? right? So we were always trying to point them to other banks. But now this is a different situation. I can be like, no, open, open an account with us, right? And like we own that company. Mm-hmm. And the the other thing that's been interesting for me is that we interact with businesses all the time, where a lot of times we don't even know it, but like there'll be one parent company that owns. A whole bunch of stuff. Subsidiary. Company. Um, man. Subsidiary, yeah, subsidiary. Mm-hmm. Man, you look at like, like, fashion. All the fashion houses. Oh, of course. We'll be in here like, oh, like, I see you. You know, I see you got that new. And then you'd be like, oh, I see. You. All that's up under VF Corporation. Uh, the same company is like, I don't care what y'all wear. The dude, the dude, <laughs> the dude. What's my man? Ah, he owns. Uh, he owns Moet. He owns oh, yeah, no, I, uh, Louis Vuitton. Yeah. He owns uh, Cartier. I think he owns Tiffany Co. He just owns so much stuff. The LVMH chart is crazy. Yeah. Like everybody's like, folks should go and just look at LVMH as a model mm-hmm. for what it's like for to just control the market. whole industries, the market. It, uh, I, I one of the craziest meetings I had um, L.A. I met Jay Pinsky, mm-hmm. who is the owner of Pinsky Media. A lot of people don't Pinsky even know. Pinsky what? Media. Pins, Pinsky Media Corporation. Mm-hmm. Pinsky Media, on the low, owns Rolling Stone, mm-hmm. Vibe, Billboard. Like, like uh, you. the list goes on and on. There, there's, there's 40 brands that they have under their portfolio. Mm-hmm. All one company. Right. 
I'm billboard, right? Like like stuff we we read. Right. One company. Deadline. Like like it was crazy sitting in this office where it's like everything. A lot of the media that we consume, certainly in music, again, Rolling Stone, Billboard, Vibe, I mean, WWD, it was like crazy number of publications, one company. So we have to start thinking about our businesses in the same way. And that's where partnership comes in, where it's right. like, ah, what is it like to have a hundred of these? Mm. Where some are under this brand, some are under that brand. How does this fit the right way? Like what? Like what avenue, having a strategic plan and executing it. Absolutely. I think the thing that, that also was spoken to me as we kind of wrap things up here is uh, beef is different in cultures. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just use the, 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 the cut and dry one. Let's talk about a white guy beef and a black guy beef. Two white guys beefing is completely different than two black guys beefing. And I'll give you an example, right? Two white guys. I can't fucking stand Dan. God damn it, John. He's a motherfucker. But guess what? They'll make millions of dollars together and will hate each other's guts. I mean despise them. Sarah, I don't want you hanging out with Dan's daughters or sisters or damn sure not his sons. But they'll make millions of dollars together. Now, let's flip the script. Uh, Zabo and uh, Demetrius, they beef. If he say, I don't fuck with him, <laughs> it's, to, it's almost like they could kill each other. If he was burning up, I wouldn't even piss on him. I, I think the thing we've got to recognize is that that is taught, is mm -hmm. learned behavior. Everything is taught. It, it's, not, it's not a, we have been taught to not trust one another. Mm. We've been taught to not work with one another. Mm. And again, I think the challenge to our community is to say, nah, like we're going to do business together. Yes. And look, there's going to be good and bad experiences in business mm -hmm. everywhere. Like This happens with customer service stuff all the time. Folks will be like, yo, I tried to give a black business a chance. And I just, they, they messed me up. My order wasn't good. Bro, listen, no, <laughs> uh, no, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry to cut you off. But one thing about me, I am the black, I'm a black, black ass, black, proud black, black person, <laughs> right? I don't hide, I don't hide from it. Mm -hmm. I don't shy away from it. I don't tuck my blackness. Is listen, you getting the blackest of the black when you're dealing with me. Yep. But with that being said, it should not alter my professionalism. No. It should not alter my vernacular. No. It should not alter my uh, uh, just the appearance of what I have going on. And if anybody's going to buy black, it's going to be me. Yep. Small businesses, it's going to be me. But one thing that I despise, if I'm taking my service to a black owned business, and that business does not meet my standards of expectation is such a turnoff. Businesses have to be excellent. I agree with you. Mm -hmm. You can't be anything less and expect people to rock with you. Correct. All I'm saying is there are going to be moments where mistakes are made mm -hmm. and you got to keep the same energy when other companies make those mistakes as you do when companies inside of the community do. That's it. Right? Because... Everybody has had their bag lost at the airport yeah. at some point. And most of them ain't going on Twitter. Running it down. No. So when those moments happen, all I'm asking for is the same grace that a lot of times we give elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Knowing that excellence is absolutely what should be required. So basically, all you're saying is, if somebody comes down to the gathering spot on multiple locations, you've got the Atlanta location, the D.C. location, yep. the L.A. location. That's three right now. We work with. Right? Yep. That's the three we're working with right now. If you go to any one of those locations, you get you a bite to eat. And it so happens to come out cold. 
You want the same grace that you will give Chick-fil-A. Yes, and I want you to know that I'm about to go to our team. We're going to work to try to make sure that that problem doesn't happen again. Because mm -hmm. to your point, we, I can't give you less than excellent. Like, like I'm not, this isn't a, like an excuse for not being amazing. You should be. Right. But in life, people are going to have moments that are not their best. And I think highlighting those moments in ways that, again, make it feel like we do this more, like, Every business makes mistakes. Right. You you interact with a company long enough, your reservation is gonna get messed up. Right. Your food, like it doesn't matter. You can go eventually, to eventually. That's just event, the price of admission. It, it, you know, it's it, like the numbers eventually gonna get you there. Mm -hmm. All I'm asking for is that we just like, oh, hey, okay, understand. And and because it's very important that we have businesses in our community like start and scale, I'm gonna give you another shot to get that right. Right. You ain't have it today. I'm going to come back next week. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you another opportunity. Now, look, if it's messed up next week, you would never see my dog. I, I ain't got nothing for you. <laughs> but if today was a bad day, all right. Let's, we let's, all have bad days. It, I, I, think, I think it's fair to say everybody has an off day at mm -hmm. some point. And having the opportunity to get back up and have another day, I think that is one of the greatest gifts that we can give specifically business owners, right. it's just the chance to be able to try again. And I think sometimes we don't talk about it in that way. We, we suggest like, yo, you give me one bad sandwich, close, close shop. Like, like uh, you shouldn't exist, cl cl fire everybody, close, turn the lights off. Right. I'm like, nah, like, they're gonna be okay. Yeah. I'm gonna be back next week to make sure it's okay right. because uh, we, gotta, we gotta make sure that like, we do this thing together. Correct. I like that, man. So listen, I introduced him as a trailblazer. I introduced him as a businessman. I introduced him as so many other things. But one thing that I did leave out is he is a dot connector. He connects the dots. Mr. Ryan, appreciate, appreciate you. you. As we close things out here at Funky Friday, every guest does it, and we do it together. Right? Hey, we're we're going to look at this one. We're going to look at this one first. Going, then we're going to run to this one. Oh, we're and going over then here we're going to run to that one right there. Oh, we're doing all three. Okay, hold oh, on. Come on now. I, I got to get my go. coordination together. One finger. Hold on. Let's try this again. Hold on. Hold on. It was one finger. See, see, I already messed <laughs> no, up. No, 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 no. I already messed up. I did my pinky, though. It's okay. I have seen Here we go. Right here. I never we're going right here. <laughs> one finger. One pinky. One thumb. One love. You dig? Appreciate you, brother. Appreciate you. Good to see you. Mm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.